How's it going guys? My name's Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. Today I want to talk through the newly discovered alternate genocide route for Deltarune Chapter 2. While Chapter 1 had near universal praise, some people were a little upset that the game was so friendly. They wanted to re-experience the options of going through a pacifist or genocide route same as Undertale. Be careful what you wish for because Chapter 2 now has something which bears implications that are potentially far worse than anything seen in the genocide run. I've seen it called a lot of things at this point. Some people simply refer to it as an alternate route, the weird route, the ice route, or the snow grave route. For simplicity, we will just call it a genocide route. I'll go through how to achieve it and highlight the differences that you will encounter by going through this path. So full spoilers from here on out, although clicking on this video I think you're kind of accepting that alongside the usual pain and seizure. It's not necessary to carry over a save file, so if you want to do this for yourself, feel free to start a new file at chapter 2. This route changes the final boss, dialogue, options, encounters throughout, and has a lot of impact on the ending. Maybe pixel art based games filled with violence whose names start with D-E and end with E are your thing. What specific tastes do you have? But if so, you should check out Dead Estate over on Steam. This is a game that I am publishing through Two Left Thumbs. It is coming out in less than a month. It's so near. This is a top-down roguelike shooter with Halloween and horror influences. It has quite a bit of its own secret content, unlockable characters, and more to discover. There's near infinite replayability. It would help us out so much if you gave that a wish list and show Steam you're interested. I promise I'll stop plugging it all the time once the game actually comes out. But hey, you can't blame a guy for trying in the meantime. This is our first game, we want to hype it up. Let's get back to the horrors of the Snowgrave route which is my personal favorite name. There's quite a lot of game that can be skipped through. Things don't really kick off until the trash zone, and you can actually play a pacifist or recruiting route up to that point. For the sake of this recording, I have been fighting everything. You actually can't kill the sweet Captain Cakes trio. Like I said, at this point, it doesn't really matter if you go genocide or pacifist, but this one especially doesn't play out differently. You'll still have to do that dance battle. After the coaster sequence, ending up in the trash heap, this is where this route begins. You can still kind of skip forward, nothing will be different at this point. We need to move ahead and reach Noel. After the cutscene with the Queen and Birdly, Noel will join up with Chris. Noel comments that we're heading the wrong direction and jokes that she already regrets this. You must fight and kill every enemy you encounter, always blocking with Chris and using Noelle's Ice Shock move. It will comment that she feels she is growing stronger. The frozen enemies remain frozen in place. Initially in the status menu at this point, Chris is listed as a level 2 tactician, commands the party to act sometimes. Now they are instead a leader, commands. Noel, Frostmancer, freezes the enemy. In these earliest battles, Noelle curls up into herself, hiding away, afraid to participate in these battles at all. You can technically attack with Chris, but it doesn't really make sense to. Using one single defend gives you enough TP to use an ice shock. It's a pretty effective one-two punch, and you wouldn't want to risk Chris accidentally landing the killing blow, as that would then abort this entire run. So yeah, just stick to that standard defend Ice Shock. Defend Ice Shock. No skipping enemies, no shortcuts, make sure you're fighting every single one. Chris, are you sure this isn't the wrong way? Once we head all the way to the left, over to where Spamton Shop is, the door is locked. Chris, why did you bring me here? No one's home. No, no one's around at all. It's, it's so creepy. At the same time, it's kind of nostalgic. Once this run is underway, there are various branching points at which you can abort the run altogether and carry forward with the game as per usual. At each of these points, I will show the abandoning version first, followed by the much more horrifying options to push forward. On your way back, we will continue to fight and freeze enemies along the way. You will know things are going well, or you know, poorly depending on how you want to look at it. 
that trash guy is gone, no cars appear, additional enemies are added. Around this time, Noelle's coldness has skyrocketed up to 100. Even though there's no cars, there's, there's nothing up here I figured I would check. You'll have to continue through the mouse puzzle, same as usual. Don't let anyone get away, make sure you're fighting everyone. The streets are empty, the ad agency guys are all gone. Even if you head up towards this carnival area, Ralsei and Susie are totally gone. Lancer is fast asleep, they seem none the wiser. It's totally optional to interact with this Ferris wheel poster, but if you do, say that you will ride with Noel, and then say Noel will ride with me. Huh? I mean, sure, if you, if you really want to, you can make up for when we were kids. Since when did Chris get so... No way, it's got to be some kind of prank. Once you're in the room that has the giant Ferris wheel advertisement, do the following in this order. Kill the enemies running around using the ice attack, same as you have been. Head over to the only NPC in the room. Oh hun, two young beings together on a school night. Could I interest you in some brand new dating shoes? <laughs> no, you've got it totally wrong. Chris and I are just, um, f friends? Chris has been my neighbor forever. We've been through so much, sometimes it feels like we know each other better than anyone. Yet, somehow it's hard to say we're exactly friends. Make sure you choose the option, we're something else. What does that mean? There's no good interpretation, that's for sure. As you start to walk away, they will stop you. If you're something else, maybe a dating shoes isn't right? Maybe I could interest you in a freeze ring. Huh? A ring? <laughs> Sorry, I don't think we need something like that. Come on, Angel. You can't get stronger without good equipment. S stronger? R right, I, I guess that's how it works here. <laughs> Chris buying me a ring? Yeah, right. You will say, get it. H Chris, you, you'd buy it for me? Sure, I, I guess. We could ask about it. How much does it cost? Just a small fee of $2,006. I think basically the game will always say it costs one more dollar than you have. Oh, sorry, we don't have that much money. Still, it was nice of Chris to offer. Say you will get it again. M me? Y you were asking me to get it? Chris, come on. You know we can't afford that. If at the point when you're pressuring Noel to get the ring, you eventually back off, we're fine. It, yeah, we don't need anything like that. Though, if Susie bought me a ring... At which point the music comes back. Ah, you two don't look together. Can I interest you in some brand new divorcing shoes? And things are fully back on track. Or we continue pressuring. Get it. What? Chris, I just told you, we don't have the money. What are you asking me to do? You aren't asking me to just get it. Chris, no, not me. I, I could never get it. I... You got the freeze ring. And here's where things are potentially worse than a typical genocide run. Not only are we killing everyone, but we're corrupting the sweetest, most innocent, most lovable character in this game along the way. What just happened? Did I actually just... No, they... They must have given it to us. The ring. Besides, it's good to get stronger, isn't it? But thanks, Chris. The obvious implication here being that... Noel froze them to get the ring. Here we swap out their snow ring, a ring with the emblem of a snowflake, with the freeze ring, a ring with a snow globe on it. Is that someone inside? Everything is now dead silent. We no longer have any background music playing. In the same area, heading towards the south, there are the two switches with this electrical gate. Normally while trying to cross the gate, we would have to press on the switch. However, this time around, when you step off the switch, the lightning comes back. How about I hold it down and you go across? N nice teamwork. S See, Noel, nothing bad is going to happen. 
getting that ring was good, wasn't it? So, stop thinking about it. Stop thinking about stepping off that switch and letting Chris get... Noelle, no, don't think about that, it's horrible. As Noelle is spitting out and beating herself up about these new violent thoughts and tendencies, we let her know it's natural. C Chris, what are you talking about? I... I must have said that out loud. We hear a quick little jingle, and the music comes back as a slightly lower-pitched version of the city theme. Now enemies start to run away from us. They no longer want to fight. If you were instead to tell her, tell her, it's horrible. Cr Chris, what are you talking about? I... I must have said that out loud? Then the result is the same. Either way, the genocide route is still in play. None of the characters will have returned, and the individual monsters will still run in fear. I've seen it said that you have to say that's natural. It appears either one works. At a certain point along this path, as Noelle reaches a certain level of strength, this dark and icy globe will form around her at the end of each battle. We no longer have the three robots hanging out at these boxes. You and Noel were filled with power. At the different traffic stops, the timers that will hold up traffic are instead frozen solid. In this area with the two very long vertical roads, you can optionally head down to the bottom towards this trash can, interact, looking for irresistible deals that will blow your mind? Well, shut your mouth because you are a weakling. Try a little Friday night workout. Then I'll show you my, then I'll show you my five left. So instead of having the little jump scare surprise Easter egg with the annoying dog, we have spammed in in the dumpster, letting us know how many enemies we've defeated. At this point, it should be down to four, so we immediately know that we have missed an enemy somewhere. We need to backtrack and find that last enemy. For me, they were just up here in the road. Confirm, back at the dumpster, four left. That's good, that's how we know we're on track. Continue forward to the second mouse puzzle. Noel will approach it. L look, Chris, another puzzle. H how should we solve it this time? Choose proceed. H how? There's nowhere to go. Chris, there's... The, the path is blocked, isn't it? If you eventually back off. Sorry, I'll do the puzzle. Yeah, I thought Chris was acting strange, but... I guess it was just another mean joke. Or keep pushing. Proceed. Chris, what are you doing? Chris is... Is everything okay? Proceed. Chris, there's lightning in the way. If, if we move any further, I'll, I'll be... Chris, you didn't really hear what I said earlier, did you? You, you wouldn't let me... Proceed. C Chris? Proceed. <laughs> then freezing everything solid. Th there, looks like I, I did it? I just listened to Chris's command, and somehow before I knew it, the puzzle was finished. What was I thinking? Chris wasn't trying to hurt me. They were just making me stronger. Again, we have a little audio cue. Noelle's magic and boldness have continued to climb up. Her coldness is still at 100. I believe it's maxed out. As we're making our way forward through the next few rooms, there will be four more sets of enemies to fight. We'll have no cutscenes or encounters. At no point will we ever fight the queen or anything like that. Keep pushing forward, keep defending, keep ice shocking. Hunt down those mices. The mace, as they were. Don't let them get away. Again, at the third mouse puzzle now. I'll go ahead and do the puzzle. And without any real prompting or goading from us at all. Isn't it a good thing? I'm solving things by myself. Taking new things for myself. Defeating enemies by myself. And every time I do it, I'm getting stronger. What did I do when we got that ring? When I solved that puzzle, it, 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I can't remember. It doesn't matter if the battles are blurring together. If Chris tells me to do it, I can do things I could never do before. Isn't it a good thing? I'm getting stronger. As long as I just do what they say. As long as I... All finished, Chris. Should we find some more enemies? Now she's getting excited about fighting. The pop-ups are actually shifty-eyed, revealing themselves worried for their oncoming fight. Normally, they pop out at you, trying to surprise attack. Instead, they're now actively trying to keep an eye out and hiding. Going into battle, Noel no longer hides away, instead swishing into battle fully at the ready. Now that we've killed absolutely everything, we have to head back to that dumpster. This time interacting with it, Angel. Angel. If you say no, you are not looking for the Ring of Thorns. Then why go to a dumpster? This does not stop you from accessing this dialogue. He wants to give you the ring, so you can start the conversation back up again. That will be 1997 Cromer. No. But it was such a good year. Then instead, agreeing to it. Are you looking for the Ring of Thorns? Yes. That'll be 1997 Cromer. A recurring number through the game, it comes up quite frequently. Yes. Here's your ring. Careful, it might sting. <laughs> you got the thorn ring. Interacting again? Don't worry. For our no money back guarantee, this is one purchase you will regret for the rest of your life. Make sure you now equip the thorn ring. Wearer takes damage from pain, reduces the TP cost of ice spells, which is very important in just a minute. Noel now reads, Ice Trancer receives pain to become stronger. Moving forwards, we have an encounter with Birdly. Noel, there you are. Just in time, we can both go back to Queen and... Noel? Chris, it looks like another enemy. Should I freeze them? No Noel? Noel, it's me. Don't you recognize me? She kind of snaps out of it for a second. B Birdly! Noelle, are you okay? What, what are you doing with Chris? I'm just... We're just... Getting stronger. Getting stronger? How? Chris, what are you doing? Instead of pushing Noelle to proceed against Birdly, I'm protecting her from you. From... Me? That, that's right. What was I thinking just now? That's right. Chris is my friend, right? What absurdity, Chris. Did you leave your IQ points at home? Noelle is only going to be protected by me. At which point, the battle starts regularly. W wait, just listen to me. But she gets cut off. Proceed. W what? Proceed? Where? Noelle, what are they talking about? Th that's it, Chris. I don't know what you're doing, but if you're hurting my friend Noelle, then I have no choice but to stop you by force. Chris, ready yourself. Wait, Birdly, stop! Run away! If at some point during this genocide route Birdly fight, you allow Chris to fall. N Noelle, look! Chris is down. Now's your chance to come back over here. No Noel? I can still hear their voice, implying that it was never Chris talking to them, never Chris controlling them and telling them what to do. Noel is slowly taking damage the entire time. We have to block. Normally, Snowgrave, a new skill that she has, requires 200 TP. So you absolutely need the Thorn Ring to have the TP costs, bringing that down to 100 so you can actually build up to using it just the once. Birdly only uses two different attacks, but they're slightly stronger variants of what he would normally do. Birdly will only target Chris, so keep defending, don't worry about healing Noel. it will stop at 55 health. Build that up to max TP, 
and use the fatal 100 TP snow grave. S snow grave? I I don't know that spell. You must continue pressuring to use Snowgrave. I'm telling you, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm telling you, stop. I don't know what you're talking about. Fine. You want to see what happens so bad? Watch what happens when I cast a spell I don't know. Noelle casts Snowgrave. What? What happened? There was so much snow, I, I couldn't see anything. I... I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to go home. There are some interesting implications here about control. Obviously, we know that the body of Chris and the heart that we control are two separate entities. And seemingly, Chris is then able to influence and control Noelle as well. This is truly a point of no return. But at this point, you kind of proceed more or less normally. That corruption has fully unfolded. It's hard to see into the ice. Chris is still a leader, still commands, no Noel. Continue to the north where Noel walked off, empty alleyways along the way until we make our way to a manhole cover. Interacting with this, there's a ladder leading inside. If you say no, nothing happens, but when you say yes, you've climbed into the manhole. Here, we end up outside of the mansion, back with Ralse and Susie. Looks like we finally found the fountain. Yeah, but where the hell is Chris? Chris! Where the hell were you? We were searching everywhere for you. Even Susie was worried. Huh? No, I wasn't. Just, you know, tell us if you're gonna... Hey, Chris, you, uh, okay? You look kinda... Aw, oh, Chris, if you're hurt, Susie can heal you. Yeah, that's right. I'm a healing master now, Chris. I'm even better than Ralse, so... If, uh, if you hurt yourself or something, then... You could try doing a hug like I did earlier. Shut up and let's just go already. Inside the mansion, the shop is blocked off by a statuified rules card. Huh, isn't this... Uh... That guy from before? Why is there a statue of him? It's not a statue, Susie. Huh? You see, each dark fountain creates a different world. A world whose darkeners reflect the will of its fountain. But though those darkeners can exist in their own worlds, they might not belong if they go to another one. Huh. So, if we just bring him back to the castle town? Do we, uh, have to do that? Uh, yes. Whatever. It's a familiar looking statue. It's terrible. The butlers are all trapped in the cafe. Queen is nowhere to be found, and with no one to defend it, a strange force has taken over the mansion. We make our way forwards towards the Queen. At this point, it truly doesn't matter if you attack, spare, recruit, what you do, you're fully locked in. Some of the different doorways and paths are now closed off to us. These posters don't even spit fire at you anymore, and instead you skip vast parts of the mansion. We enter a room loaded with pippuses. These are the eggs normally only seen during that Spamton Neo secret boss fight. If you check them, the original. An invasive species of freshwater clam. 4,639 liked this. They explode into little heads of Spamton. You won! Navigate the path as slowly and carefully as you can, same as you would attempting to make your way through the cheese in a regular run of this game. Navigating this is pretty tight. You're probably going to bump into these things all the time and have to simply defend, block, whatever you choose to do, and dodge the different heads. Not too tough, but can be rather annoying. 
Some of the paths are too narrow to walk through. Stick to the uh, slightly wider ones and you'll be fine. Going through this hallway, pepices rain down upon the path, spammed in heads colliding every which way. Heading off to the left, we have little pepices rolling around on wheels. Trying to head down to the B1 floor. Whoa, you saucy little sponge you. Don't barge in when a man is changing forms. Wait, wait one second. Is that my esteemed customer? Thanks to you and that little Hachimama, I am living big. Soon I'll have everyone in this city eating right out of my... <laughs> I sure hope no one seals the fountain around now. No, I sure hope. I sure hope. Kid, I'm busy becoming God. Go play Minecraft or something. It's not my job to be some kid's extra boss. Kind of making fun of Minecraft and commenting on the fact that he is normally a secret extra optional boss in this game. Heading up to the very top. Huh? Hey, it says this is Noelle's room. Chris, let's go in and save her. And, uh, you know, teach her not to get in our way. Chris? Fine. I'll do it myself. Chris? Don't you wonder how they're doing in there? But instead of fading away like it normally would... Um, I said don't you wonder how Noelle and Susie are doing? Y you're right, Chris. It has only been 30 seconds. I'll wait a minute first. Things fade, showing the passage of time. All right, let's go. Wait, 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 wait. We were supposed to... Hey, let's go. Wait, Susie, what uh, happened in there? What do you mean, what happened? Oh, in, in there, with Noel. Nothing. N nothing? Nothing at all? Just told her everything is a dream. Now she's feeling better. Anything else? No, let's go. Psst, I'll tell you later, Chris. Hey! Oh well, as long as Susie's happy, right? So there's a weird implication there that maybe Ralsei's aware of the events that were coming, that he knew that there was this whole flirtatious scene that was supposed to play out. Maybe Ralsei's just being hopeful, but it really makes it seem like he was actively anticipating something happening there. There's nothing over at the Acid Lake. We cannot proceed to the left. The winds are blowing, and we must make our way off towards the Queen. Upon making it to this top platform, nobody is here. Continue on further across the bridge. We have the same cutscene talking about the knight, describing the ways they would stab the world with their willful knife and create new fountains. And at the end, here I am, still empty-handed in my quest. Noelle is in no condition to assist me now. She must rest. And Bird Boy, I searched for him for ages, but my sensors cannot detect him anywhere. How thoughtful you two have come to help me. Chris, Susie, which one of you wants to be the new knight? Get out of our way. Noelle needs to wake up. Wake? No, she is already awakened to too much. Let her close her eyes and sleep away into a darker, darker dream. Something that will read as being very familiar to anyone who's looked into gaster lore and secrets. The queen flies away and returns in her giga body. Now, which one of you wants to help me cover this world in darkness? Queen, why would we want to unleash the roaring so much? What is that? Um, the roaring? Yeah, that. What is that? If too much darkness is released, titans will emerge from the fountain and destroy everything. All darkners will turn into statues, and all lightners will be lost in eternal chaos. Holy circuits, are you serious? You really didn't know that? N no So it's basically the same conversation playing out at a different time. Well, my plans are shot. My one idea to help Noel failed. Go ahead, Chris. Seal the fountain. 
I will not stay in your way any longer. And just like that, no queen fights whatsoever. When you interact, they remain staring off into the distance. As we continue on, Susie pauses. Uh, hey. Hey, wait. You don't have to. I mean... Uh, it doesn't have to be goodbye, you know? Error. I have no idea what you're talking about. We have our own dark world. You can stay there, you know? Who knows, maybe someday you'll even get to meet Noelle again. Really? Uh, maybe. Fatal exception. Sweet. And oh hell yeah, EXE. Susie, I knew you were a nice girl. Hey, uh, I'm just... Chris, go seal the fountain. I... I'm gonna go see Noelle before you do. Um, Chris, I'll tell Queen about our town. Chris, I look forward to being your wacky roommate. Chris, the fountain is waiting for you. Amazing, so I can turn your castle into my mansion? Wait, that's not what I'm saying. You're blocked off, we can't go back to go and check in on Susie or Noelle. Advancing forward on the rooftop, we have a save point and a vending machine. It sells pre-fountain refreshments. One bagel, 120. Yeah, you're gonna wanna buy like as many of these as you can, just to be safe. With all that killing you've been doing, you probably have a lot of cash. Why not put some of that cash towards some dough? Advancing forward by yourself towards the fountain. It was as if your very soul was glowing. Not. We have Spamton come crashing down with their wires. Let me say, let me say thanks. Thanks to your total jackass stunts, I have become Neo. And now it's my mansion, my city, my world. So, why are you stealing the fountain? The uh, me over right at the good part? What are you? The game show host? Ah, kid, forget it. I'm an honest man. I'll let you pay your way out of this one. Pay. With your rapidly shrinking life. <laughs> this battle plays out very similarly to the Spamton Neo fight in a regular route. This time, however, Chris has two different act options. X Slash does a bunch of damage, and Fried Pippus can be used to heal. It's time to be a big shot. I remember when you were just a lost little sponge, sleeping at the bottom of a dumpster. Spamton turns to the audience and laughs. I gave you everything I had, my life advice. I told you four left and asked you buy or don't buy. Spamton appeals to the audience with a festive jig. I gave you my commemorative ring for the price of my favorite year, which we've learned, 1997. Spamton begs to the audience. Spamton prays to the audience. And this is how you repay me? Treating me like DLC? What? What? Are you serious? It's for you. There is no audience. No, I get it. It's you and that Hachi Mama. You've been making, haven't you? Smells like rotten glass. You've been making hyperlink blocked. And now that you have your own supply, you don't need me. I was too trusting, too honest. I've always been a man of the Pippus, a real Pippus person. Spamton begs the audience to stop taking the furniture out of his room. I should have known you would have used my ring for evil. Oh right, that's why I sold it to you. When you eat a fried Pippus to heal, recovered HP with Pippus, and we have the likes down in the bottom right corner, which I really don't know what that's all about. You think making frozen chicken with your side chick, frozen chicken being birdly and side chick Noel, is gonna let you drink up that sweet, sweet freedom sauce? Well, you're right, don't blame me. When you're crying in a broken home wishing you let your old pal Spamton kill you. Spamton feels the sweet breeze as he takes a ride around town. If you choose to check Spamton Neo, 
You won't find higher attack and defense anywhere else. The smooth taste of Neo. Wake up and taste the pain. Can a little sponge do this? Go gaga and die? The smooth taste of Neo. The stage lights are shattered. Don't you want to be a big shot? It pulls the strings and makes them ring. Clown? No, I feel sick. My esteemed customer, I see you are attempting to deplete my HP. I think this happens around 10% left. I'll admit, you've got some guts, kid. But in a one-for-one -one battle, Neo never loses. It's time for a little blue light special. Spamton Neo's attack dropped, and their defense rose greatly. Didn't you know? Neo is famous for its high defense. Now, enjoy the fireworks, kid. At which point we switched to all these pippus based attacks, getting heads blasted at us every way. Spamton Neo's defense is towering. You can continue to try to attack, it doesn't really matter, it only lets you do 10 damage, enjoy the fireworks, we keep getting these heads blasted at us, and if their health gets too low, they will just heal themselves anyway. Instead, we have to switch to acting. We'll see a little face of Ral say, Chris called for help, but nobody came. Which itself is actually a Earthbound reference. What? You're calling friends? You think you can beat me with your friend's magic? Go ahead, kid. Call all you want. No one will ever pick up. Continue to act. Ral say once more. Nobody came. Go ahead and scream into the receiver. The voice runs out eventually. Your voice, their voice, until you realize you are all alone. Acting this time, it is now Susie we see. You call for help, but nobody came. There will be no more miracles. No more magic. You lost it when you tried to see too far. You lost it. Acting again, Susie. Nobody came. You make me sick. Muttering your lost friend's names at the bottom of a dumpster. No one's gonna help you. Get that through your beautiful head, you little worm. Acting now, it is Noel. You whispered Noel's name. Her? You're still trying to use her? <laughs> you think she can hear you now muttering her name? What's she gonna do? Make an ice cream? Hey, is it cold in here or is it just me? Massive damage dealt, and our heart carries forward, closing the fountain, same as it would have at the end of chapter one, or on a normal route. We awake at school, still within the library computer lab. H huh? Birdly's alarm. A dream? It was really just a... S Susie! Susie, wh what are you doing here? Uh, you invited us to study, remember? Oh, right, I, I did, didn't I? <laughs> uh, you're in a good mood. Did you uh, have a good dream? It was a nightmare. Oh, I'm just happy I woke up. The end was nice, though. What happened? <laughs> well, uh, even though we wouldn't have seen it, we can presume that... Her and Susie still had, like, their nice Ferris wheel ride, perhaps. <laughs> hey, Birdly, time to get up and go. Birdly? Gosh, you've been studying too much, Birdly. Honestly, you deserve a little rest, you know? Sweet dreams. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's straight up dead. Noelle is slightly more confident this time, approaching things rather directly, but what are you doing? You don't have a tail, do you, Susie? Th uh, no, of course not. Really? That's great. Her, her boldness, her strength, her sense of control is way up. That was weird, Chris. Somehow it doesn't feel like we just saved the world. And then this conversation carries on as normal. If you check on Birdly, 
he doesn't seem to be awake. If you check on this closet in the back, the closet is spacious and full of old electronics. A large person could easily fit inside. I think kind of indicating that we could stash Birdly's body in there. For some reason, this trash pin in the corner is different. It's a trash can. You get the feeling it doesn't have any friends. It's hard to explain why you feel this way about a trash can. If after we head to the hospital and check in on Noel and her father. Silver Drake, huh? That's a new one. All right, what's the plan, honey? Hmm, maybe we could try Ice Shock, the move that she was using all through this route. Ice on the Ice Palace, boss? Don't you want to try Fire Shock or something? Uh, yeah, you're right. Here, how about letting me control it for a bit? And here we're seeing more of confident Noelle not wanting to give up any control. N no, I I'll control it myself. Not like you to be a controller hog, honey. You feeling alright? Huh? Me? Of course, I'm fine, Dad. I just... I fell asleep in the library and... You know, just had a weird dream. <laughs> Noel, I knew that bird-brained put you to sleep. <laughs> What'd he do? Start lecturing you on his theorem of the inequality in children's fighter games? <laughs> no, no, he... He fell asleep too. Wow, he even put himself to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, sounds like you two have been hitting the books too hard. Why don't you go home and hibernate? I'll see you tomorrow at church. Dad, are you going to be okay to go? Of course. You take it easy, honey. Okay then, yeah, I'll go home and rest. And now another little difference. Noelle will actually notice Chris first on her way out of the room. Chris! Chris, what are you doing here? Hell if I know. S Susie! And carrying on, oh, this is Susie. Noelle runs out of the room. When we go to leave. Hey, Susie. Mind if I have a word with you a sec? Uh, guess I'll be a sec, Chris. Outside of that room, we have a new cutscene, hearing the thoughts of Noel. Come on, it, it was just a bad dream. Even so, it was so real, I can't get it out of my mind. That voice telling me what to do? A voice unlike Chris's? A terrifying voice. Chris, recently there's been something different about them. Why hasn't anyone else noticed it? I... I have to figure it out. Why Chris is acting so strange? Why they keep coming to the hospital? If you were to say, to see you, to see your father. Either way, it has the same dialogue. H huh? C Chris? How long have you been standing there? Phew, you, <laughs> you really scared me, you know? Keep it together, Noel. There's nothing to be afraid of. After all, a dream is just a dream, right? Th then, then why did their voice just now sound so terrifying? Because it wasn't a dream. Hey, Chris, let's beat it already. If you instead choose to say nothing, the dialogue progresses as it normally would. Man, he kept telling me about Noelle, like her favorite things, places she'd like to go. No idea what the hell that was about. So, uh, the hell were you two doing? Uh, oh, uh, nothing, Susie. I, I, I was just about to go home. I, I'll see you. Guess she's afraid of me again, huh? Man, would be nice if she knew everything that happened was real, huh, Chris? Come on, try to be a little more enthusiastic. <laughs> the player actually maintains control during that scene. If you make a movement towards Noel, it immediately jumps forward to the section where Noel recognizes that Chris is present. Stepping again, stop, don't come any closer with a shaky voice. Stepping again, ends the text boxes. 
If at some point in the run you take off Noel's watch and instead put it on Chris, during this dialogue option where she tries to convince herself a dream is just a dream, interrupts herself. Chris, why are you wearing my watch? When did you... In your dream. At which point Susie comes back and we don't get to go any further down that branch. The remainder of the game throughout the rest of Hometown plays out the same. That is how you play out the Snow Grave route. Every bit of branching and unique details within that I'm aware of. And oh man, what did I say at the beginning? Be careful what you wish for. It is just so messed up. How is that gonna look when chapter 3 comes and you try to play with this now wicked and cruel Noel and dead Birdly? Like, if that's happening in Chapter 2, this game is going to have some crazy branching points. There is already so much to talk about just with these two chapters. It, it's going to be tough to cover. One last time, in this video at least, I'll ask you to follow links in the description and a pinned comment to check out Dead Estate. Give it a wish list if it feels like your sort of thing. Same as I did for chapter 1, I'm going to make my Gaster Eggs videos, looking at the secrets, easter eggs, references, and unique details all throughout this second chapter. I've already started compiling info for that, but for the next week or so, I really need to focus on some madness content. I'm already a little disappointed those videos aren't going to be prepared for Madness Day specifically, but hey, it had to happen to make room for this new Delta Rune chapter and all things surrounding it. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Thank you for your patience while I dig through this game as much as I can. Those videos are going to be a little spaced out. Thank you patrons of the channel whose names are scrolling off to the right. I hope to see you again soon.